This insect is called the Douglas fir tussock moth. Now, being a moth, this insect is in the family Lepidoptera. Its scientific name is Orgia sudatsugata. The primary host plant of the Douglas fir tussock moth is the Douglas fir. Sometimes they will use other host trees, such as ponderosa pine or western larch, but that means they might have to change their name to avoid an identity crisis. Now if you want to find this insect, you'll need to have your air miles card ready. That's because the Douglas fir tussock moth is not found in Ontario. It is found in low-lying Douglas fir forests in the dry regions of interior British Columbia and parts of the western United States. Yet the species is not invasive. In fact, it is endemic to its range. The population has always been cyclical, with short outbreak periods of three to four years, followed by longer 8-12 to 12 year periods of recessions when the population is low. They were first described defoliating Douglas fir trees at the southern edge of interior BC in 1916. Now, they were probably defoliating trees long before then, but it took until 1916 for someone to write about it in detail. So, if the species is not invasive and its population cycles are natural, why is it considered a pest? Well, it's really only a pest because, for humans, outbreaks of Douglas fir tussock moths can be bothersome. They are considered pests in urban areas where they attack ornamental trees, such as in people's yards, in parks, or along golf courses. Aside from degrading the aesthetic quality of the landscape, humans can be bothered by Douglas fir tussock moths in another way. The hairs on the caterpillars, egg masses, cocoons, and adult females can cause an allergic reaction in humans. This reaction is called tussicosis. We'll be back to the presentation after this short message. Are you a Douglas fir, ponderosa pine, western larch, or ornamental spruce tree? Have you been noticing baldness starting on the top third of your crown and working its way downward? Do your friends comment on how you look burnt out? Have you been feeling weak, making you susceptible to annoying pests like bark beetles? If you are experiencing these symptoms, you may be infested with Douglas fir tussock moth. Left untreated, an infestation can result in branch dieback and, if lasting over three to four years, an increased risk of death. Inspect your trunk and branches for Douglas fir tussock moths at all life stages, eggs, larvae, pupae, and adult moths. If you detect a Douglas fir tussock moth infestation, talk to your healthcare professional to see if NPV is right for you. We now return to our regular program. The life cycle of the Douglas fir tussock moth is similar to that of other butterflies and moths. They undergo complete metamorphosis. This species is univoltine with a single generation per year. So let's begin in late summer, when the adults emerge. Adult males look like your typical plain old moth, brownish gray with feathery antenna, pretty unremarkable. Adult females, on the other hand, hardly look like a moth. They have no wings. Turns out after they pupate, the females are just so cozy in their cocoon that they don't bother to leave, so they don't need wings. On the day they emerge, females emit pheromones to attract males over to mate. Females then lay about 200 eggs right there on the cocoon. Then she covers them with froth and hairs to make a cozy home where the eggs remain over the winter. The adults die before winter. The larvae hatch out in late spring and they are very hungry caterpillars. They feed on the needles of their host plant and disperse by ballooning on little silk threads. They pupate in late July on the underside of branches. After two weeks, the adults emerge from the pupae and begin the cycle again. In areas where outbreaks have occurred in the past, monitoring populations of the Douglas fir tussock moth can help forest managers keep tabs on the pest. You can set up pheromone traps in the spring to attract males. The number of males in the trap gives an indication of the population size. You can prevent an outbreak using cultural controls. A good strategy for urban environments is to plant a mix of different tree species. You can also thin out dense stands of Douglas fir or other host trees to make it harder for the tussock moth to spread. 
The Douglas fir tussock moth does have some natural enemies, such as birds and insects. However, natural predators are not enough to manage a full-blown outbreak. For that, the most effective controls are chemical controls. The most commonly used and most effective appears to be a biocontrol called nuclear polyhedrosis virus, or NPV. This virus exists naturally in the environment and is entomopathogenic, meaning it affects insects, particularly moths and butterflies. Forest managers can use a microbial pesticide spray containing NPV, and it must be sprayed onto the trees in spring just as the larvae are emerging from their eggs. Typically, it spreads so quickly that the entire larvae population collapses all in the same year. There is one small problem. NPV is registered for use by government only. This is mainly because it's expensive and typically requires aerial application. So it's not an option for homeowners trying to save trees in their yard. They can apply BTK, commonly used as a biological insecticide. Another challenge comes from climate change. As our climate changes, it may become easier for the tussock moth eggs to survive winter, which could increase the frequency and intensity of outbreaks. A changing climate may also allow for range expansion, which means it's harder to predict where a future outbreak may occur. In summary, the Douglas fir tussock moth is an insect considered to be a pest within its range in southern interior BC and in parts of the western US. The larvae cause serious defoliation to host trees such as Douglas fir. Fortunately, their cyclical populations can be monitored and controls such as spraying NPV have been proven quite effective. There are ways to successfully manage this pest.